Chris Watkin here with the four horsemen of the portal apocalypse. Gentlemen, you four have come together. Murray from Agents Union, Paul Davis from Boycott Right Move, Revolution Estate Agency 2020, David Thomas, and Rob Sargent from Say No to Right Move. Murray, why did the four of you come together? We've got to go back about five or six weeks when this first started as a lo local germinating seed in Golders Green, Northwest 11. An agent contacted me and said, what are we going to do about right move? Jump forward. Um, the negotiator posted something about right move and their statistics. I answered that, put my name and my email on there, and suddenly the waterfall cascaded. I was contacted by dozens of agents asking what we were going to do because the move was we've got to save ourselves some money. Um, to try and keep it as short as possible, Alan Golden, who actually contacted the CEO of Right Move, managed to negotiate with him after the shot in the foot with the deferral for 75% discount. That exploded things. One of my members, a chap called Manny Clarico, set up a state agency union group. I love the name. I latched onto it straight away and I've run with it. And that's what I see us as being a union of people. I met these guys online. Paul set up boycott, David set up revolution, and Rob was in the background already doing say no. I reached out to Rob very early on, but he's got a bit of a guard in front of him, all these PR people, etc. But I managed to get past them, and now we've become friendly online. And his attitude, his, his um, genre, it's not the right word, his feelings were the same as ours. We've got to say no to right move. So about three weeks ago, I decided we're all saying the same thing, but we're all saying it differently. So I spoke to Paul, who and I seem to be very much on the same wavelength. I spoke to David, who's got a multi-listing idea in mind. And I got a hold of Rob and I said, we need to get these people together. Rob then over, got the PR back up to do it. We pulled the four heads together. We were four heads of the apocalypse. Yeah, I got it right first time. Uh, together at the same time. And Rob said, we can do this. We can move forward. We're definitely going to be a group. And he's got some information he'll tell you about, but they're going to bring us all together. But if we don't come together to do this, we're going to be fractured. We're now one piece of the same jigsaw. Okay, but Paul, if you go yeah. on your Right Move boycott website, everyone's firing mm -hmm. off in different, di different directions with different things. Thing with different opinions. Your signal's just cut out and I didn't get any of that, sorry. You froze. That's all right. I, I, I said, if you go onto the Boycott Right Move website, it feels like there's a thousand agents on there with a thousand different opinions. <clears throat> Are you all really singing off the same hymn sheet? Um, I think you've got the call support where I think uh, we are counted about 150 people um, have handed in notice and are leaving. And I think there's definitely a lot of uh, people that are sitting on the sidelines or maybe on the fence and they're not sure whether they want to come away from right move or what impact it will have on their business and, you know, want to see sort of how things develop. So I think there's a lot of people singing from the same hymn sheet and want the same direction, but just also want that sort of little bit of support to help nudge them over to the sort of the right, to our, our well, to potentially leaving or looking at alternative options. Okay, but I, I, I listen to you, all of you, and various of you are at different opinions, mm. at different places, in, in that you are, um, some of you say you want to leave <laughs> right move and, and we'll worry about what we're going to do afterwards. Some of you, let's build another portal. What is the message? What is the short term goal? What is the long term goal? I think uh, but, so. There's a couple of goals with that, um, and I think one of the key things is we want to. Um, yeah, so one of the things is we're looking at is is in terms of sort of in in the background and for the uh, longer term future, do we need like a purchasing union so that we can't be bullied by sort of larger organisations that rely on us being fragmented, and that's the key. I think is like you know they can set their prices because we are fragmented. We're not one, two, three, up to. 20 sort of branch agents and um, you know we don't have the power so uh, uh, so that's looking at sort of can we collectivize um, and I think this is the key work the conversations we're having in the background which again Murray's instigated and with Rob you know we will have more power to sort of 
actually sort of stand up to some of these uh, uh, larger organisations. Can, uh, can, can I say something quickly? I think I'll we'll answer this. We have never been treated as the client. This yeah. time we're turning it around. Now it's the man biting the dog, not the dog biting the man, if you understand what I mean. We've taken it, I won't say the rude words, we've taken it from them, pushing the prices up from 250 when I started in 1990, well, after that, to 900 seven years ago when I opened up Dreamview, and now 1600. It's leapt through the floorboards, and we've had no control over it. That's what we want to take control of. There are others, Rob, David, Paul, uh, 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 will come off. They might decide to come off. That's another decision. But the main point of this, the core message is we're the client. We want to tell you what to charge us, not the other way around. And the example, if I may say so, is Zoopla. They've listened. Their prices were never as high, even before. Their, their client um, handling was better. And they haven't been hiking the prices. This was the first time recently their prices went up well before the, the, the virus. Okay, so so is it a case of you want you not? It's not a case of wanting to destroy Right Move. It's a case of rebalancing the the, the relationship where where you where agents are the master and they're the servant, paying for a, a fair deal, um, and and you have no. What, what the future of portals is is another thing. I know, David, you you've got some strong opinions on that. But is that almost medium to long term? The short term is is bring right move to heal, or make them love to make make them feel more appreciative of what agents do for them. Is that it? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think certainly with, with my um, um, group there is is I think they need to know that there is this level of frustration. I mean, like as, as uh, Murray uh, uh, pointed to, you know, seven to ten percent price increases per year. Um, 80 percent profit margins it, it's just we, we're feeling a bit abused and i think that's the thing it's just it, at some point it comes to a head and of course the current environment has made everyone look at you know crikey my balance sheet and my cash flow forecast over the next few months you know this can't continue ad infinitum um and it's the time to do something about it Okay, D David, I want to bring you in on this one. Are you letting your hearts rule your head just because someone offers 80% profit? It's not a case of what profit they make. It's about the value they produce for you, isn't it? It is, but I think there's a lot more than just um, the value we've become used to getting from Right Move. Is It's the way we've been treated for years. And, and the constant price increases. And I think the... The thing that really pushed me was the way they reacted to the coronavirus. Yeah. <clears throat> that, in, that, that way they came out with the deferred payment scheme was just kind of showed what their attitude is towards agents and also their complete misunderstanding of what we do and how we operate. Because I think they got, you know, they obviously got a big backlash for that, but that was just a, an almost taking it that they've always been like that. And that, and that was the final thing for me in, in my eyes. And I think what we're doing here though, is, is bringing together a collective for the first time in the industry that share the same view that we need to rebalance that control yeah. because up until now, we've never been able to come together and sort of say, we need to rebalance this control that Rightmove has over our marketplace. They rely on us being fragmented. Um. I mean, let's be frank, the, the industry itself is primarily made up of one man and one woman bands. Mm. The thing is though, is that between you all, you've only got 20, 25% of the industry. I've still been on your Facebook websites and it's everyone's preaching to the converted. What the hell are you lot doing to talk to the other 15,000 estate agents who are not on social media, who are not playing the game or, or, or saying, oh, this is brilliant. What are you doing to get those on boards to win their hearts and minds? Chris, just let me come in for, a, for 30 seconds and the guys will add their, their piece to that. Um, you're absolutely right, 20-25% of the most important part of the market and achieved in you know, about a month, maybe a bit less than a month. You know, look at the years that the portals have spent building um this group's only been running for you know three to three to four weeks and i'll leave the guys to talk about how they're reaching out as well 
Yeah, I think that's the key thing, and that that shows a level of frustration. You say only twenty to twenty five percent, but as you say, Robert, it's it's in four weeks, and, and that's quite significant. Um, and I think it's key. Um, you know, there's a, there's things that we need to do to sort of reach out to other agents. And you know, I've been speaking to sort of my other local competitors, and it's like, look, we, we need to downsource and you know look at the future of a state agency. And you know, just mentioning that I'm part of this group, and you know, here's the link. It's get involved if you want to. Um, I, you know, we can't just sit back and keep taking it. But at, at the same time, we have to be very careful about sort of anti-competitive laws and how we approach that. But it's just having that conversation. And every single one that I pick up the phone to, it's like, you know, how are you feeling about right move? And each one, without fail, has said, it's not just the continual price increases, it's the arrogance. And it's sort of been a repeated message. And I think that's it. It's, uh, you know, maybe, maybe one was fairly ambivalent, but every single one I spoke to, um, it, you know, said the same thing. Even just now, while we were talking earlier, someone was posted on right on Facebook on boycott. You can pick it up on May the first. He's going to reveal how many agents have come off already, and he's going to do that monthly. That's the way we're going to promote it. We were talking about it earlier. Rob's got the machine, definitely, and he's got the capability that we don't have. I can tell you for a fact, within my immediate vicinity of Northwest London, and I'm very well known by most of them, they're following what I'm doing. And I think all, if not, have joined. But that's just there. We can spread that word definitely. The scaring, is, the scaremongering is: what if Agent A comes off and Agent B doesn't? It isn't about that, as far as I think. I hope we're all concerned. It's about whether we can get them down to a sensible price range. And then, if they don't, if they come back in three months' time and say sixteen hundred pounds again, please. Well, you know, I can't put it on the screen. But you know how many fingers we'll be putting up to them. What 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 do you consider is a fair deal from right now? Yeah. Can I answer that? When I opened my envelope this morning and it said £417, mm. when it used to say £1,600. <laughs> I got, we have a word in Yiddish, it's called a machaya. You won't understand, we'll look it up later on. They call me a Michigan, it's a madman. Machaya means it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure you can only get by something like that. Look, they're all laughing, it's exactly that. We've got control. Okay, it may only be temporary. I think with Zoopla's backup, package we've got something special we've got five months free from them now and if we leave right move and i'm allowed to say this because andy marshall said it was out there and it's okay if we leave right move at the end of their period they'll give us another four months free as well it's a win-win so if right move don't wake up and smell the freaking tulips <laughs> that are over there in holland are not going to get over here they're going to wake up in nobody's bed that's for sure but aren't we just creating another right move too by platform you know, plowing we've got, on our, whoa, 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 whoa. we've got fixed rate for this year. We've got RPI interest next year. And do you think you'll be stupid enough not to look back at what happened in 2020 and think, hang on a minute, these agents are really on side together. We can't be putting the fees up because they'll do the same thing they did to right move. Any businessman worth their salt should think about what we're doing now and see how we've got control. 3,000, three people, 30 people, we're saying the same thing. We want to be treated properly and fair fees. And I think, guys, hold your hands up, 400, 500 pound a month. Happy with that? Yeah. It's just not going to happen, though. I'm sorry to be not kind of split, but, you know, it's great having a reduced rate uh, for the next few months. But right move need to change their DNA to ever, you know, they can't survive on us paying these fees. And they will <laughs> have to change their DNA. And this is kind of why I think, you know, maybe I'm a bit more sort of a out there and not boycott, you need to go, because they're not going to listen to us otherwise. Um, I don't, and, I don't and I think, sorry, 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 Murray, but it's, it's a great question, Chris, is, you know, are we going to create right move too? And I think this is where I'm sort of in, in tune with a lot of what David's looking at. It's like, actually, we need to look at sort of where we're being crashed financially uh, uh, at the moment and the short term and how we can deal with that. And I think it's a great thing looking at other portals to balance the power and bring them to the table. But actually, it's what we do beyond that. I mean, do we, yes, portals will always have a place, but are we spending our sort of marketing money in the best interest of our sellers, which is what we're here about, you know, it's all about, and um, getting the best price for our sellers and our landlords. And it, it, is this the most effective spend? And, I, you know, this has forced me to look at my business model, crunch my numbers, and it's like, can I do a better job for my sellers with that same marketing spend? And I think we can. Uh, and, and that's where I think, you know, David's been doing a lot of good work in in that field as well. Okay, I mean, let's be frank, boys and girls. Do we really want a fragmented portal system where there's five, six, seven portals? I know Chris, if I, 
Go on. Chris, if I, I know where you're going with this. And yeah, I mean, the, the, the reality is it, it, it's good for the customer to have a, a, a galvanised whole of market central focus portal. Um, and that, and that, 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 that's not going to go away. It's, it, it, it's going to have to morph. It's going to have to change. I have grave doubts personally whether that portal will be right moving in the future. Um, but yeah, the, the industry recognises the fact that they do need a portal that ideally represents the vast majority of the market. But we're not going to pay the type of price to support a portal that we've been asked to pay in the last decade. We won't continue to do it. We won't continue to work away seven days a week to load the content. But somebody or something will morph during this period and going forward. Look how long it took to build right now. Um, and you know, definitely a whole of market portal or a majority of market portal is good for the customer. Um, but you know, the industry will not accept paying uh, to an entity the, the types of money being leveraged with its hard work uh, year on year. Not one agent will accept that in reality. And, and being spoken to and treated the way we are. Yeah. They don't listen to us. They don't come back to us. We've all got different <coughs> breadth in the same area. When we say something, it never gets dealt with. They, all they want to say is put those fingers back up at us and say, sorry, if you don't like us, it's £1,600 walk away not the attitude do you think do you think you would be saying different things if the fees were the same but they were more caring in the last couple of years do you think we're in this position now might be grown strong because they do add value of course and I, I think maybe it might cushion the blow but i think when you look at sort of the cash flow forecast and what's going to be a, a nil market at the moment until we're out of lockdown an anemic market after it's, it, it's sort of yes it might have just taken the sting out of it but when you look at the crunch it's, they charge way too much sorry can i come in on what you just said there right we've got too strong because we let them mm. giving the dog a lead as long as it wants to be and it runs around the park without you and pulls you along with it that's the mistake i'm going back to 1994 or 95 when i first started advertising properties on the internet it was free Right move bought out a package called Estate. That was another website for the very first portal. Google it, you'll find it might be somewhere still there. And then they charged 200 pounds, and that was okay. And then 400, and suddenly they exploded. And that's when we made the mistake. And you know the interesting thing? Only this damn coronavirus has focused us all together because we've all got nothing better to do, <coughs> no disrespect, than sit here doing this. If I was busy, I'd still be thinking the same thing about Right move and paying the 1600 pounds, but I wouldn't have any leverage. And I would be too busy loading up my properties and trying to sell them. Okay, okay. But what we've got to remember is half the battle is the consumer one. And, and what are you lot going to do to persuade consumers that right move isn't essential for marketing of a property? You know, uh, isn't it, you know, right move are not going to roll over. They've got, they are sitting on shed loads of cash. I bet even the Bank of England are going back to them to, to ask the <laughs> You know, they David, could, David, you've got to answer this one. Oh, hold on a second. They could throw 20 million quid, 30 million quid, and, and, and not even consider <laughs> and do a campaign that your property isn't on right move, you're missing out, and you won't get the best price. What are you going to do to counteract? What are you going to do to help the agents, the one man bands who are living in fear that they know damn well their competitors will use it against them? This is the, the key to this is this collective, it's the numbers. The only way this is going to work is by agents coming together and getting the numbers because ultimately right move and nothing without the stock. If you take more than 50% of their stock off that website, why would the consumer go there and only get 50% of the market? They just would. You don't even need anything close to that. I think, you know, super number two and what I think they, they sort of got 90% of the stock. You only need about 15% of the properties to leave and the consumers yeah. will follow. Okay. And, and Sorry, can I give you my opinion? Hang on, Chris. Can I give you my opinion? <coughs> Again, I'm older than all you guys. We used by, to a long sell, way. by a long way. We used to sell these properties without ports. Exactly. Yeah, we yeah. just about had newspapers in those days. Yeah. We had to phone people up. We had to stick envelopes. We had to put things on. I used to run off details on a Gestetner. That's the state agency. Anyone can type a few keys and stick a property on a web and sit back and wait for it to happen. These guys, me, the guys I've talked to on Boycott and, and Estate Agents Group, I'm telling them, you've got to get out there and sell your brand. Above my door, it says, sorry for the advertising, Dreamview Estates, Murray Lee Limited. That's me. I'm the brand. It's a bit more difficult for Rob because he's got a group. Paul's company is called, oops. At Home Estates and Lettings Agency. Okay. 
your name is Paul Davis. Da David, yours is Liberty Gate. Yeah. Unique, it's you. You're the brand, not me, not, 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 not the portals. Yeah. We sell the properties. You can go to your vendor, Paul, I'm going to sell your house. Look how passionate I am. Doesn't matter what pages I'm on, I'm going to find you a buyer. I don't need a right move to do that. I don't need a Zoopla to do that. And then look back. How many leads lead to a sale? Has anybody done that? I don't reckon they do. Gives me David as an applicant and I'll sell David another property. Doesn't matter that that property wasn't on right move. I found another property for him. It's interesting. That, here's an interesting stat. Uh, a very well-known and large estate agent in Cambridgeshire <laughs> looked back at all of his sales in, in a, over a year and actually found out that only 4% of the only 4% of the people that applied for a property, the property they applied for on right move was the one they actually ended up buying. Very much. Yeah. I don't need to write that down. And, and, <laughs> And a very, sorry, sorry, Paul, and a very large number, we, we do an interrogation in our business of, of what a right move lead really is. And a very large number of people are uh, loyal to our brand already, or people we've dealt with many, many times before, but they do find their way in through the, through the right move system. If, if they didn't find their way in through that system, the suggestion that they wouldn't find their way in by virtue of the fact they know my, they know my brand and there's convenience to come to it, you know, that wouldn't go away. So, you know, it's, it, it, it's a methodology by which it allows connectivity with my own um, loyal client bank already. It's, it, it, you know, we, we generate, at, at, at my scale, and I believe even at the smaller end of the market, agents-wise, we generate leads. Yeah, you know, we generate the leads. They come through that channel. Right. I think to get when we're getting the best price for, you know, almost taking what Robert Murray have said is when we sell a property before it's even gone live, that's when we're getting the best price for it. We need to be creating the demand for it as per state agencies. You know, you, you, some people rely on the portal uploads. And to me, that's, that's it has its place. But to me, in my humble opinion, that's reasonably lazy estate agency. We need to create the demand for our sellers and if we do that properly we get the best price i like you have got a database of hundreds of applicants not like you down there in the bottom right hand corner you've got thousands but between us let's say we've got 500 applicants 600 applicants a thousand applicants well in amongst there who needs a blooming portal phone on one of these guys they'll buy the property trust me i do more business off the portals than i do on the portal going back to your original question how do we sort of convince the consumer that yes we need to tell that story which we're telling you now and i guess this is part of it but then one of the things that I'm really keen to do with my group as well is like your structured campaign with your, you know, you can't just be like, by the way, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we've just left right move. It's just making sure you're structuring that campaign, uh, that marketing message and communication. Um, and with, with some of those great statistics that you just mentioned there, but then also what else you're going to do to make sure that you sell their property for the best price. I'm going to give you two pieces here very quickly, uh, Chris. Right at the start of this, I had a phone call from one of the guys via whichever, it doesn't make any difference. And he said to me, what you've done with the 75% discount is you saved some of my staff's jobs. Got me here. Unbelievable. Now, that's the word we're getting out. That's how this all came about. We're now a group of estate agents together. Mm. We've not got everybody yet. Rob's going to help us do that because he's got the machine to do it. David will speak to his area, Paul to his. Mine are following me. Um, I've got to spread the area a little bit because I'm only Northwest London and I'm possibly the main speaker for London and I'm up against a lot of, of the big corporates, Glentree and uh, Beecham Estates, big, big players in the field sell big properties. Beecham Estates just sold a £250 million house, one of the most expensive ever sold. I'm not going to convince them. They're in different leagues to me. But the little guys like me, and you said it, are only too pleased to hear what we're doing. And I can run that out through all the Golders Green Road into Hendon, up into Finchley, and up into Hampstead. Okay. David, what mm. would you like the members of your revolution group to be doing on a day by day mm. basis with their agents in their town to get the collective up? Because it can't be just on your four shoulders. No, I think, I think part of this is. <clears throat> the key is the collective, is the community, is getting us all together. And it, at this stage, it's having these kind of conversations, talking about, okay, we've got this situation now with Right Move, and it's a, it's a catalyst for change. But then, what are we going to do after that? And that's primarily the group that I set up was <clears throat> having a bigger discussion about how do we collaborate more. 
I mean, ultimately, that's what we're doing now is four agents and four big groups is coming together, collaborating and saying, look, we want change. We've all been saying for so long that we don't like the status quo. We want to be able to offer a better service. We want to be able to act for buyers. There's so many different things that we begrudgingly hate about our industry and our jobs. And yet now we've got the opportunity to change it. And we're only going to be able to do that, though, by collectively coming together, having the discussions to an element, taking back control of our market and then being able to collaborate moving forward. Because whatever we do now, we can then take forward and say, right, how do we how do we increase and, and better the service we provide? Okay. I'll ask you a question, Chris. Go for it. And Bob, you may remember the other two guys may not. Do you remember when Prudential owned the state agents? <clears throat> really? Yeah. What happened to them? Went down the ran the down the what sold for a pound, didn't they? And, and what did they plan to do? They thought by putting the name above the door, biggest mistake ever, was the best way to lead forward with the state agency. And no disrespect to Rob, and he's actually not got because I didn't know what the Acorn Group was. Sorry, Rob. I found out it's a, a different group of names of the state agents under an umbrella. Prudential took all the names off the doors and called everybody Prudential. Well, what a mistake that, that was. And of course, then what happened? The same people who owned the business before bought them back for a penny, opened them up under Murray Lee Limited and doing fantastic. It's the same principle <clears throat> of being frightened of right move, being confident of yourself. Do you think, do you think the, uh, in the last 20 years, a state agency, the love of the love, I, I talked to so many bosses that they've fallen out of love with, with the job of a state agency. Yeah. You know, fees have been on a downward trajectory, which means we can't attract <laughs> the best people. Uh, bosses are, are begrudgingly paying, uh, they have to pay low wages because fees are low, which means they get a lower quality member of staff. We are begrudgingly allowed the CRMs and, and, and the portals to run our businesses. And maybe this is an opportunity to fall back in love with being an estate agent again. I'm 65 years old, Chris. I'm still doing it. See the glint in the eye? I'm on the fourth <laughs> retail of some properties. I'm selling to the grandchildren of people. They come to me because of me. I do this 24 seven. I go to bed with it. I wake up with it. If this phone rings, it's ringing now. I don't know who that is. Uh, if this phone rings, I'll answer it straight away and I'll deal with it. That's what we've got to do. We've got to be estate agents. When I started, the commission rate was 2.5% in the first 4,500, 1.5% in the next 5,000, 1% in the remainder. And we earned our fees. That's what we did. We don't do that anymore. Well, no disrespect. A lot of them don't do that. Can, can, can I just add something just to balance a little bit? Regardless of size, regardless of the brand, I mean, yeah, there's some, there's some pretty big successful agents in London. The most successful ones of those run uh, a very, very tight personal service. They, yeah, their individual branches get very, very tight to their client bank and, and they have got personalities in their business and they don't sit behind it. But they tell the tech what to do. The tech doesn't tell them what to do. We lead the tech. So we want every bit of technology around our businesses that we can possibly get. But we, if that tech starts to determine what you do as an estate agent on a daily basis, you'll actually kill <coughs> creativity. And there's an awful lot of sales that aren't happening because um, the tech industry would turn us into a group of order takers yeah. uh, if they had their way. And, and the old fashioned thing of picking up a box and making it happen is becoming a dying art. And that is the important balance between tech that actually stifles um, growth and creativity and tech that assists it. And, and that's, the, that's what we're all talking about. Yeah, Murray is a traditionalist. I would, yeah, I'd like to just quickly balance and, and defend some of my biggest competitors who've got you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 offices, your Dexter's in London. They're a successful business. They do deliver in a very competitive way, despite being a large brand. It's the same thing. It's, it's, it's leading the tech as opposed to the tech leading you. I would like to say thank you very much to all four of you. Thank you for your time today. And just for the record, so everyone is not under any inter uh, misinterpretation, I am not pro or anti any portal. I am not pro any of the groups in this here. I am an independent person. I feel I'm, a, I'm in a humble position that I'm able to speak independently. I have no portal to sell. There's plenty of people out there that do. And I hope today the, this has been the first of potentially many chats that we can have with the mo main movers and shakers the four members of the portal apocalypse. I can everyone say that word? <laughs> and, 
if, if you want to see the outtakes, boys and girls, I, it took me about six goes to say that word. Uh, you never know that might come out another one. Thank you for your time today. Uh, and, and just, you know, basically, boys and girls in, out there in estate agency land, this is your business. This is your life. Fall in love with being an estate agent again. You don't need a right move. You don't need Zoopla. You don't need on the market. In fact, you don't need any portals. All you just need is just a passion and a drive. People say this is a people business. Why don't we actually prove it to them? Thank you for your time today, gentlemen.